Please note, this video merely collects information that is believed to be true at this time, and there are many obscured and unanswered secrets that still lie within these tales. As the stories and storytellers of Doctor Who changes, so too does its history. You know, all that wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff. Hi, I'm Jamie, and today I'll be introducing Nessa from the Fourth Doctor and Fifth Doctor era. Nessa was a regular in the show from 1981 to 1983. Nessa is an aristocrat of Trakim, a genius scientist and a companion of the 4th and 5th Doctor. She met the 4th Doctor while on her home planet of Trakim, as he helped the Keeper of Trakim with trying to stop the Master. However, her father, Tramus, ended up becoming one of the Master's victims as the Master took his body for his own. Nessa's home planet was also destroyed and she was left an orphan, traveling with the Doctor into his fifth incarnation alongside Adric and Tegan. Nessa eventually leaves the TARDIS to assist in the curing of those with the Lazarus disease. Nessa appears in a total of 13 stories and 42 episodes. Holy shit. <laughs> okay, there's season 18 with the Keeper of Trackin four parts. Next is Logopolis, which I probably pronounced that wrong, with four parts. Then it's on to season 19 with, again, I'm going to pronounce it wrong, Castro Volva, four parts. Next is Four to Doomsday with four parts. Then here's the one I pronounced wrong as well, Kinda, four parts, or is it Kinda? I don't know anymore. Then it's next, the next one is The Visitation with four parts. Black Orchid, two parts. Earthshock, four parts. And it broke my heart too. Time Flay, four parts. Then it's season 20. The first episode being Arc of Infinity, four parts. Then it's Snake Dance, four parts. Modern Undead, four parts. And last, and I'm probably going to pronounce this one wrong too, Terminus, four parts. Nice. Okay, this counts as a special appearance because her last episode was before this episode, but in this episode she only appears in a cameo. And this episode is the Caves of Androzani in episode four. It's when the fifth doctor's regenerating and he's having all his past companions' voices going through his head. And in those cameos, Nessa is one of them. So I just thought I'd count it. Best regeneration scene ever. I mean, seriously. Oh yeah, show the ribbon, show the ribbon. I got a ribbon from Gallifrey One where someone, it said, it said like, um. The best regeneration ever is like uh, Peter Davison with Nicola Bryant's cleavage. Oh, here we go, here we go. So it's with my Sixth Doctor photo because I, I only got a picture of the Sixth Doctor. But someone made a ribbon from Gallifrey One that says, I missed the 90, uh, 1984 regeneration of Peter Davison into Colin Baker because I was looking at Nicola Bryant's cleavage. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> The next ever special appearances is Dimensions in Time. 
Of course. After that, it's, believe it or not, Time Crash, because she's mentioned by the 10th Doctor in it. So I guess it counts as a special appearance, even though she doesn't appear, but she is mentioned, so I'm just throwing it in there. After that, um, there is another, I guess, special appearance. I'm just, I'm adding it in there as one, where Tegan and Nessa reunite in a clip for the season 20 Blu-ray release. That's impossible. Hello, Tegan. Nessa? It's been a long time. <laughs> Too long. <laughs> oh my God, are you okay? A little older. <laughs> Don't start me. How did you contact me? What are you even doing here? Looking for you, of course. But we left you on Terminus. I hitched a ride. And then last, but certainly, definitely, maybe not least, <laughs> a 2020 short published to the official Doctor Who YouTube channel entitled Farewell Sarah Jane, written by former Doctor Who showrunner and current showrunner currently, Russell T. Davies, revealed that Nessa was in a relationship with fellow traveler Tegan. What? What the fuck? Now that you can make up all your own canon with this because Doctor Who is wibbly wobbly, you choose your own canon with it. Ha! Gay! You also know what I'm gonna say. She appears in numerous Big Finish audios, novels, comics, etc., etc. It's just, it's out there. Holy Jesus. What is that? What the f is that? So, Nessa's personality was pleasant, friendly, and selfless, with Tegan remarking that she was too good for this world. Pure cinnamon, too good for this world. It was said that Nessa was a very nice girl. If angels existed in the Doctor Who universe, it would be this chick right here. And the fifth doctor describing her as terribly nice. Because, yeah, that's the only way I can describe Nessa, really. She was just really nice. She was really a good person. Nice. Um, her gentle and trusting nature meant that she was not adept at detecting deception, but she was skilled at negotiating an effective balance between strong personalities. Tegan noted that Nessa preferred to care and share. That's the right way to do it. This chick is the full package, the kind of white girl you would like to bring home to mama. She has a perfect credit score, and her farts turn into perfume. Um, despite her gentleness, Nessa was willing to use and threaten violence when necessary, destroying on separate occasions um, an android and some other fucking creature from Doctor Who. <laughs> Literally. Let's face it, folks, I, Morgan Freeman, would smack that cute little butt of hers and I would have it my way, like the Burger King commercials. Um, she initially wanted to kill the Tramus Master for the murder of her father, although she did manage to forgive him. Now it's time to move on to Nessa trivia. So I came a lot of interesting things, as usual with trivia, that even I didn't know. So, the first one is that Nessa was originally meant to have appeared only in the Keeper of Tracken as a supporting character. Are you serious? She was therefore the sole creation of writer Johnny Byrne, to whom royalties had to be paid when the character was used. Kind of like Terry Nation with the Daleks. Like the Brigadier and K9, she's a rare example of a serious regular to whom the BBC does not enjoy sole copyright. FBI, open up! Oops. <laughs> I'm sorry. I should not have laughed, but it's kind of funny. <laughs> well, they screwed over the, the Eighth Doctor's companions. Well, yeah, and I mean, like, there's also Terry Nation with the Daleks, so. Anyway. <laughs> Soul, different subject. <laughs> 
The next part of trivia is that Peter Davison was known to have preferred Nessa over any of his other companions. I whipped out my lizard! Uh-oh. You're not supposed to play favorites as the doctor, but they still do. <laughs> he intervened on several occasions when John Nathan Turner... Fuck you, asshole. Fuck you, asshole. <laughs> ...attempted to write the character out of the series. Another person who stands up to J&T. <laughs> you should clone yourself. Why's that? So you can go fuck yourself. Um, discounting the ambiguous status of various unit personnel, Nessa is the first companion to be introduced in one story and established as a companion in another. She is the first companion to kiss the doctor on screen. A kiss on the cheek is in her last episode. So, does this mean like, well, see, okay, Grace is the first one to actually kiss him on the lips, but Ness is the first one to kiss him on the cheek. Oof. That history. But mm. Nessa came first. Nessa came first, so yeah. She's, so she's the first one to actually give a doctor a kiss. Ever. <clears throat> Play psycho music here. Dun dun dun. Anyway. <clears throat> she was written out of the show when John Nathan Turner. Fuck you, asshole. Felt that the character had run her course. Figures. This upset both Peter Davison and Sarah Sutton. So you can blame you can blame John Nathan Turner for you know everything. <laughs> we, usually we usually do. That's why I shake the fist every time I say his name. No. Hasta la vista, baby. Uh, Johnny Bryan, or Byrne, however you pronounce his fucking name, uh, <laughs> I named her after his friend Nerissa. I don't know if I, you know, pronounce that right, but it's spelled N-E-R-I-S-S-A. So, there we go. At one point, she was going to exhibit a preternatural sensitivity. What? I don't know, some Doctor Who stuff. <laughs> okay, that's it. That's literally it for the trivia. <laughs> okay. So as for Ness's life after the Doctor, well. Although Ness's fate after the TARDIS is not certain, the spin-off novel Asylum by Peter Darvell Evans relates that she left Terminus terminus words and settled down as an academic in a university on an unspecified planet in asylum nessa encounters the fourth doctor from a time before he met her while he is investigating a historical anomaly this uh meeting leaves the doctor with the knowledge that he will have to be extremely careful dealing with nessa when he eventually meets her younger self to avoid changing history Nessa assisted those harmed by the Time War and rejoined the Doctor, Tegan, and Turlow before remaining in East Space. Short Trips Audio, a heart on both sides, what it's described as. <laughs> she was eventually able to return and entered into a relationship with Tegan on Earth. Oh! Ew! Dude! What the f- So there's many different accounts of her life after the Doctor. So now it's time for trivia on Sarah Sutton, the actress who played Nessa herself. So I only have one thing on her because there's not much information. And it's although Sutton left full-time acting after her time as Nessa, she has since performed this role in several of the Big Finish Productions Doctor Who audio dramas and played an unrelated role in a Doctor Who universe audio drama by BBB Productions. <laughs> we met her at a convention up in Los Angeles. A Gallifrey one. And she was the absolute sweetest person you actually would meet. Yeah, she's literally like her character. Like, okay, 
because there was Peter Davison, there was, um, gosh, Janet Felding, who plays Tegan, and there was Sarah Sutton, who plays Vanessa. All three of them are exactly, exactly like their characters. We listened to uh, Sarah Sutton talk on one of her panels and she was exactly like Nessa. Like, just super sweet, you know, down to earth. She even had a sense of grace and royalty to her. <laughs> and me and Michael are just sitting in the audience going, you notice how they're so much like their characters? Like, Janet Felding has like this like, you know, spice to her, like she she's not afraid to talk back like Tegan. And then you have Sarah Sutton being all, you know, sweet and kind and everything. And then you, you have uh, Peter Davison, who's exactly like his doc doctor, but having like little battles here and there with uh, Janet Felding. And it's just, it's so funny. They're exactly like their characters. It's crazy. <laughs> so as for my personal opinion on Nessa as a character, I will admit that when I first watched uh, her episodes and things like that, there's not much more I can say. Like she, she's she's a good companion for who she is and what she was made for at the time. But she doesn't really stand out to me so much. If anything, if I had to choose, if I had to choose a favorite companion during the Fifth Doctor era, oof, it would probably be Tegan. <laughs> I actually really like Tegan. Um, but I will say that. Um, Nessa's last episode where she departs, you know, and, and leaves the TARDIS and the Fifth Doctor was not only just really unexpected, but it also made sense for her as a character. And it was also kind of sad too, because, you know, a companion departure is always going to be sad, especially if they're like, you know, a companion that you like or anything. Like, it, it just, you know, a companion departure is always going to get at the hearts a little. Doctor. Uh, Doctor, talk to Nissa. What is it? I'm not coming with you. What? And for Nessa, it, it made sense for her to want to stay behind and help the station uh, that they were on turn into a hospital to help people, to help them heal and help them feel better. And that made sense for Nessa because she went through so much loss in her life. She lost her father, she lost her mother, then she lost her stepmother, and then she lost her planet, and she lost all her people. And it was all taken away in the blink of an eye. And so she, you know, she had it, she went through a lot of grief, she went through a lot of loss. So for her to go from that and traveling with the doctor and then being like, hey, I love traveling with you. I have nothing else in my life. You're like family to me now, but I have a calling here now where I need to help these people and help them heal and help them get better, just as the doctor helps her in return to do, to overcome, you know? I thought that was very good character development, actually, very good character development. And um, it helped her grow as a character too. So, yeah, I thought that was really nice. There's too much to be done here. Tell her she must. Well, you can't stay. It isn't safe. Certainly not until the veneer have sorted out how they're to run Terminus. And with my skills, I can help them. We need you too. I've enjoyed every moment of my time on the TARDIS, and I'll miss you both. But here I have a chance to put into practice the skills I learnt on Traken. Please, Miss. I'm adamant. Please, let us part in good faith. We do fully understand the commitment you'd be undertaking. Yes. And that life here would be very hard. I am fully aware of that, but I want to stay. Then you're a very brave person. I wish you every luck. She'll die here. Not easily, Tegan. Like you, I'm indestructible. Nessa. I wouldn't say so. 
I wouldn't say so. I, I mean, like, Tegan's definitely one to stand out, that's for sure. And she's one to, you know, enter a room and be heard, for sure. But I think Tegan and Nessa were a perfect blend. Like, they were, they were opposites, but they were a perfect blend. They, they complemented each other. Kind of like the angel and devil on the Fifth Doctor's uh, shoulders. I wouldn't really describe Tegan as a devil of sorts, but she's kind of like more out there, you know, like, mm, out there. Um, they, they, I don't know, they just bring a good balance to each other. And I did like them with Adric too. And that was, that was another one of the things that got to, you know, not only the Doctor, but that, that also got to uh, Tegan and Nessa too, was the death of Adric. That was just another thing to add to a pile of losses for Nessa, was that she watched one of the doctor's companions die right before her eyes. And it just, you know, it added up in that list of people I've lost, everything I've lost in my life. And it just... Well, my last question here is, do you feel that, did we get all her character development in the Fifth Doctor's run, or do you feel like they're kind of mostly left on the cutting room floor? I feel like we got good character development in Nessa, honestly. Because, um, cause like I said, she went from a, a girl who, you know, who was an aristocrat, who practically had things handed to her, to all of a sudden it being taken away in the blink of an eye. She lost everything. Adric, I can't see Traken. Traken should be. I can't even see Matilla Oriansis. I was to kill my stepmother, and then my father, and now the world that I grew up in. Put it out forever. Her journey with the doctor was one about healing. Like, she had to learn how to heal from this. She had to learn how to find herself. And in the end, she finally, you know, is like, I have to stay here. Just as you've helped me heal, Doctor, I need to help these people in return. And I thought that was really good. That was really good character development. But I will say, with that one trivia that I posted about John Nathan Turner. Fuck you, asshole. Pretty much, um, saying, okay, let's get rid of NASA, let's write this kind of thing, you know? I'm so sick of this company. It felt like it was sudden. It was a sudden departure, but at the same time, it was also good because of the fact, like I said, she went from like grieving to learning how to help people heal. And sometimes when you're grieving and you go through a big traumatic loss, Helping others heal also helps you heal in return. Thank you for watching. If you like what I've done, please like and subscribe to the channel for more content. And as for the companion we will be covering next, it is Romana 3 from the audios and novels. Thank you for watching. See you next time. God, I haven't done this in so long. I'm out of practice, like severely out of practice. Look at that. <laughs> God, I got a crack. Okay. Ooh, that helped a little. Oh shit, I'm talking about Nessa. Fuck. Okay, I'm so rusty with this. Ah, oh, I'm so out of practice. Okay. What does the red light mean? I see a red light on your camera. Recording. Oh. oh. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Trying to pronounce words because I'm American and I'm not British. <laughs> ready? Yeah. No, I'm not ready. I'm never ready. <laughs> okay. Ugh. All right, so what else do I say after this? I'm literally out of practice. up now like what the fuck does that mean it's probably it's, it's pre
Supernatural. Does that mean like telekinesis or something? Blah, blah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Maybe I'm never ready. <laughs> it's okay. You're doing great. I know, because you're recording it all. <laughs> Even my rants. I'm like, ah! Okay. I didn't say that right. <laughs> so, God, if I won't choke. Do it again. Start again. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Hold on, let me get a drink. I'm literally just going with it. I'm like, I don't care. I might, I might. Maybe I pronounce this wrong. Maybe I pronounce it right. I don't know anymore, and I'm not gonna take the time to go back and check it. It is what it is. Why didn't she just say abnormal or or something like extraordinary? Yeah, like come on. Anyway, mm. and give me a break. <laughs> I'm American. I'm not gonna get it right. I try. Okay. Anyway, I'm ready. <laughs> I hear every salon. Oh jeez. <laughs> That's right, I'm not used to it. Oh shit, well. Damn, I'm out. <laughs> okay. <clears throat>